Bibliophiles of the internet, my name's Adriana and today I'm here to bring you my fourth quarter book haul, aka my last book haul of 2017. You know, that doesn't really mean anything, but I just like that it sounds so dramatic. As I said, this is my fourth quarter book haul, which means I acquired these books from the beginning of October to the very end of December. There may be one or two in there from the very end of September, I'm not quite sure at this point. To start us off, the first book I got, I believe at the very end of September, is this new edition of The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. This is the Bloomsbury Modern Classics edition. As you should know, this is one of my favorite stories of all time. I believe this is the fifth edition of the book that I own. I have the first edition hardback, paperback, I have the UK cover, I own the ebook, and now I have this stunning new edition, and I can honestly say it's not enough. Then for my birthday in October, one of my best friends, Stephen, got me volumes 8 and 9 of Boku no Hero Academia or My Hero Academia by Horikoshi Kohei. As you can see, I've read both of these volumes already and I love them so much. I've talked quite a bit about this manga series on my channel lately and I will definitely continue to do so as I continue reading because holy crap, this series has my soul. It is fan flippin -tastic. Then we have my October book of the month pick and that was The Power by Naomi Alderman. I'm sure you've heard of this one. It sounds like a really fascinating sci-fi story. I believe it's set in the not so distant future and women have somehow developed the ability to expel electricity from the palms of their hands. Of course, with the discovery of this dangerous newfound power comes a drastic shift in the sphere of social politics and gender dynamics. I've heard fantastic reviews for this one across the board. I think it's going to be especially interesting for me as a non-binary reader because I'm very interested to see how this narrative sort of defines the concept of women and what determines who displays these powers and who doesn't. Then at long last, I finally got my pre-order of the first volume of Cucumber Quest by GGDG. This story actually originated as a webcomic and I actually talked about it quite a few times in the early stages of my booktube life, so it's kind of like a full circle moment because now it's been officially picked up by first second and I'm just so excited for so many more people to experience this. This comic is a satirical, fairy tale like story about this evil queen who has unleashed an ancient force of destruction known as the Nightmare Knight, and together they are terrorizing the Seven Kingdoms of Dreamside. Of course, we have our unlikely heroes, a nerdy magician named Cucumber and his super tough sister Almond, who kind of have to put their lives on hold in order to save the world. I'm so excited to be able to go back now and read the story again, not only because the colors and the illustrations are just brilliant, but because I love the way the story is able to take these very familiar tropes and beats you would find in any fairy tale or hero's journey type story and finds a way to make them new and exciting and refreshing and most importantly hilarious. Then for my birthday my parents gave me a Barnes & Noble gift card, bless their souls, and I used it to buy two volumes of manga that came very highly recommended from one of my besties, Matthew from Matthew Sharapa. The first series he introduced me to was The High School Life of a Fudanshi by Michinoku Atami. This seems like a slice of life slash comedy series about a main character who is a Fudanshi. A Fudanshi is a male fan obsessed with boys love manga, which is a racy subgenre of manga all about boys falling in love and doing all the things that entails. Predictably, the people who most often follow and enjoy boys love manga are women, so I believe this story is about Sakaguchi trying to figure out his place in the community as a man, and I think he's also trying to connect with his fellow Fudanshis, so I think it's gonna be really great. And the second series Matthew recommended me was Dream and Son by Takano Ishigo. If the name sounds familiar, it's because this is the same mangaka who created Orange, one of the best mangas out there, in my not-so-humble opinion. This is another slice-of-life story about a young girl who feels very out of place at home, especially since her mother passed away, and now her father and her stepmother seem to only care about her younger brother. So one day she skips school, she goes to a nearby park, and she runs into a kind stranger who offers her a place of her own on three conditions. Firstly, she has to explain why she ran away. Secondly, she has to locate his missing house key. And the third condition is that she has to have a dream and fall in love. It kind of seems like a bizarre premise, but I've heard it's really sweet and uplifting and that it has all those really cutesy, feel-good moments that Orange had in spades without all the heaviness of depression and suicide, which kind of seems nice. Moving on to November, my book of the month pick for that month was The Future Home of the Living God by Louise Erdrich. Like everything she does, this is own voice's native fiction. Again, it has this sort of near-future dystopian type vibe because it's about when evolution suddenly stops and suddenly everyone who's pregnant is giving birth to children who closely resemble Neanderthal and other early forms of human life. Suddenly, issues of pregnancy and childbearing become very serious matters of state security, and basically anyone who is capable of becoming pregnant is rounded up and there's a bounty put on their heads. I believe this story picks up when all of that is just beginning, and the story is told from the perspective of a 26-year-old native woman named Cedar who is four months pregnant. 
Then I got two belated birthday gifts from my bestie for the resty Ivan, and the first thing they got me is The Black Book of Poems by Vincent K. Hunanyan. This poet is Armenian-born, and I believe he got his degree in writing from UCLA fairly recently, and this is his first publication, which is really exciting. It's small, modest collections like these that really give me a sense of purpose and hope, so I'm really excited to read this one soon. It will be my final collection that I read for 2017. And the second thing Ivan got me was Certain Dark Things by Silvia Moreno Garcia. I was ecstatic when I opened this one up because Ivan knows I love, love, loved Signal to Noise. I raved about that one earlier this year, and this is one that Ivan actually read and loved recently, so it was just the perfect choice. I only need three words to sell you on this book. Mexican, vampire, nor. That's it. Coincidentally, the next book I received was this signed first edition of The Beautiful Ones by Silvia Moreno Garcia. This was actually sent to me by the author herself. I have a whole separate video talking about how that came about and also describing the synopsis of the story, so if you would like to hear more about this one, I will link that down below. Then I picked up what would turn out to be one of my new all-time favorite books, and that is Elmet by Fiona Mosley. Of course, this was also a recommendation from Matthew. It is a quiet tour de force of a novel. I just finished listening to it a couple of days before Christmas and I am still so utterly amazed by it that I can't even articulate the things that I feel. It's a very quiet, close, intimate story about this small Irish family. There's a father with violent tendencies raising his two children in this house that they built with their own hands, and it's very much removed and separate from everyone and everything, purposefully because this father wants to raise his children kind of organically outside of any societal constraints. They maintain this very simple, humble, modest lifestyle, and it's about how over the years all these different people, for various reasons, are threatening that lifestyle, and they may even try to snuff it out. Honestly, I don't have words enough. I can't even find the right words right now to convey what needs to be conveyed. So all I can say is please read this book, listen to this book, just let some quality into your life. Then somewhat spontaneously after that I picked up two Shakespeare plays and those were Romeo and Juliet and King Lear, of course, written by William Shakespeare and these are both in the Pelican editions. In my own defense, I initially picked up Romeo and Juliet because I work primarily with freshmen in high school and towards winter break they were working more and more with Romeo and Juliet and it was coming up more in our discussions so I figured I would pick it up and do a quick refresher, which I did. King Lear, not too sure why I got this one besides the fact that it looked really nice and I'm not sure I've ever read it. Then from the middle grade world I heard tell of Nevermore by Jessica Townsend. This sounds like a middle grade fantasy adventure story about a young girl named Morgan Crow who was born on eventide, which is basically the unluckiest day. So anytime anything remotely bad or awful happens in town, the citizens have sort of collectively agreed that it's her fault. To make things worse, being born on eventide basically means that she's cursed to die at midnight on her 11th birthday. One day before her 11th birthday, she's whisked away to this magical city called Nevermore, and if she wants to stay there for good and avoid her fate, she's going to have to join this elite organization, and the only way to do that is to undergo four extremely difficult and dangerous trials while competing against hundreds of hopefuls. In December, I was trying to be a good noodle. I told myself, don't pick any book of the month, just save your credit for 2018, but then they trolled me when they put City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty on that list because I added it to my box so fast. I believe this is Own Voice's historical fantasy about a woman named Nadi who is a con woman living in 18th century Cairo. She doesn't really believe in magic or soothsaying or palm reading or anything like that, but she will use any trick in the book to swindle nobles. Until one day when she accidentally summons a dark jinn warrior named Dara to her side, and I believe that's where the story takes off. Then right before the holidays, I was catching up with some college friends, and once we parted ways, I realized we were so close to a bookstore, and something inside me just said, you know, drive yourself there and treat yourself. So I listened to that little voice, and the first thing I got was the 10th volume of Boku no Hiro Academia by Horikoshi Kohei. As you can see, I've already read this volume as well, and I loved it, I loved it, I loved it. I'm currently working on continuing further into the series, and I am currently in Boku no Hiro Academia hell, and it is the best place to be. And the second thing I got myself is something that I've wanted for so, so long, and that is The Wizards of Once by Cressida Cowell. Cressida Cowell is a name that's been cropping up a lot on my channel lately because I've been slowly listening to all the books in her How to Train Your Dragon series, and yes, I do have the audiobook for this book, and yes, it is also read by David Tennant. This is a middle grade fantasy story about a dark forest that used to be teeming with magic until the warriors came. There are two heroes, a young boy named Zar who comes from a wizard tribe but has absolutely 
absolutely no magic to speak of and he'll do anything to get it, and a young girl named Wish who comes from a warrior tribe who has a forbidden magical object and she will do anything to conceal it. I'm not really sure how their paths cross, but once they do I'm sure magic will happen and it's gonna be good stuff. And the last few things I have to show you are Christmas gifts. The first two things I have to show you are both gifts from my Secret Santa. I'm part of this Voxer chat which is just full of booktube SFF people and every year they do a Secret Santa and this was my first year and my Secret Santa turned out to be the wonderful Sam from Sam's Nonsense. She actually very kindly sent me two incredible middle grade books, the first of which is Green Glass House by Kate Milford. This seems like a really fun mystery adventure type story. It's about this smuggler's inn called Green Glass House and it's usually pretty empty around the winter season, but then the innkeeper's adopted son Milo realizes that tons and tons of guests are trickling in and they all seem to have very strange stories about how they're connected to the inn itself. Suddenly things start going missing, strange things are happening, tempers are flaring, and Milo is just trying to get to the bottom of what is going down in Green Glass House. And the second book she got me is Witchwood by Tejera Mafi. This one honestly means so much to me because I loved Furthermore, one of the best things I read in 2017, and it was also a nominee for the Booktube SFF Awards, and Sam and I were both judges for that event, and I know that she knows I love that book, I wanted it to win, and I really wanted the sequel, so this was just the most thoughtful choice. This is obviously the companion to Furthermore. It's about a young girl named Laylee whose mother has passed away and her father has fallen out of touch with everyone and everything since, which means she is the only one in her village to carry on the practice of scrubbing the skins and souls of the dead in preparation for the afterlife. Not only is she becoming more and more lonely, but her hair is slowly turning silver until two very familiar faces show up and remind Laylee about the power of magic, love, color, and friendship. And then I also did a gift exchange with one of my lovely booktube friends, Kayla from Bookadoodles. She also very generously got me two things, the first of which is the first part of Avatar The Last Airbender, The Search, which is the next volume I need to read in order to continue on with this continuation of the series. So for that alone, Kayla, you are the true MVP. And she also got me the first volume of Giant Days, illustrated by Lissa Treyman and written by John Allison. I actually read this one already and I loved it so much. It's basically about these three young women who became fast friends when they started university three weeks ago and it's about their ups and downs of college life. It's a wonderful slice of life type story. It is utterly fantastic and so, so, so hilarious. And finally from my sister, I got In Other Lands by Sarah Reese Brennan. I don't really know too much about this one. I first heard about it from the queer light of my life, C.S. Picot, who was praising it and billed this story as like a really fun, satirical, queer fantasy romp. From what I can gather, it's about this teenage boy named Elliot who is somehow transported to this magical place called the Borderlands, and it doesn't really work for him because he's very unmotivated and he doesn't really jibe well with like war or work or people. And for whatever reason, he ends up staying for much longer than he would like, but there's all these magical creatures there. There's elves and there's mermaids, and there's also a really attractive, charming human boy who Elliot just might fall in love with, and I am ready for all the things. So at long last, those are all the books I collected from the beginning of October to the very end of December. I'm not going to say there were too many, but it kind of felt like maybe there were too many. If you have any thoughts rolling around in your head about any of the books I shared today, please feel free to share those thoughts in the comments below. But that is everything I had for this book haul today. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it, and I will catch you on the flip side of the page. Bye!